Hi and welcome to Intection. So today we're going to be talking about the Bash Bunny. Uh, I did have this on my previous um, video, but I had a couple of people who uh, had some challenges in connecting uh, to the Bash Bunny or downloading the um, or downloading new payloads. So today what we're going to do is um, go through this in some more detail. Let me just change some of my camera settings as uh, so it looks like we have the camera is got some strange colors so let's just change that up again that's better i think the camera is now in a better state okay cool so um um what i want to do now is quickly go through and uh, and deal with some of the uh, comments uh if you want to know more about the bash bunny itself then please go ahead and have a look at my previous videos and uh, they should um, be able to give you a bit more information on um, where we are and uh, how to use the system. So anyway, let's crack on. So first of all, let's uh, look at the Bash Bunny itself. So what we're going to do first is show you how to um, update the payloads on, on the Bash Bunny. So let's show you where to get them from. So if you go to, uh, to wiki.bashbunny.com, which you can see up here so let's just change my screen so you can see this so uh, we're going to go to there we go so let's change my screen right that's better I had a bit of a control malfunction there okay so as you can go to the first thing you need to do is go to wiki.bashbunny.com uh, and there you'll get uh, the good manual page for all about the bash bunny please see my previous videos and as you can see the most important thing to note about the bash bunny is its its keys so what we have is on the bash bunny you have button selections and if you put the bash bunny in in one uh, so all the way forward that's in army mode and if it's all the way back that's switch position one and in the middle that is switch position two so just for clarity all the way forward army mode all the way back switch position one and all the way into in the middle position is switch position two okay so let's uh, quickly show you what to do so the first thing what we're going to do is we are going to download the new payloads so what we're going to do is go to where we keep the payloads so as you can see we have the payloads here now what happens is these are updated quite frequently and uh, the way the way what you would normally do is you go and you would download the zip file or the payloads now I've already done this before so we should have them on the desktop and so I've got the zip file here uncompressed and the these are the payloads now I'll show you what that ref, ref, refers to with relation to the bash bunny so what we're going to do is we're going to take this bash bunny I'm going to plug it into my computer and we're going to mount the SD card that's inside and uh, it should appear in a moment so I switch to army mode mounting the SD card and just waiting for it to come up down here there we go there's the bash bunny now what I'm going to do is open a new window open a new window and so you can see the two side by side so let's just do a side by side view um, I'm not particularly very good with these views in Windows 10 I'm more of a Linux person but we will work our way through. I'm sure you can cascade these views. Let's just see if there's an option here. Uh, cascade, show windows stacked side by side. There we go. That's better. Right. Okay. So on the right hand side is the bash bunny. As you can see, the directory structure is very similar. And then on the left hand side is the zip file that I downloaded from um, Git. So if we now quickly look into there, you have this structure where you have the library and it's broken down into groups. And if we do the same on our side, you have the library and there you go. It's broken down into groups. So it's exactly the same. Now, 
all you need to do, and I, I won't do it in this case, but all you need to do effectively is to copy everything on this side and drop it over that side, or e even easier, just go to the high level payloads directory and copy the payloads directory. So um, I won't do that because it would take some time, but that is basically what we need to do is copy across. So that's a simple copy from here over here. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll cancel that. Okay, so that's how you get your, your files onto the Bash Bunny. So the next thing is obviously let's let's create a payload. So if we go on, if we close down this and now look at the Bash Bunny itself, uh, we just make this bigger. And if we look at the Bash Bunny itself, uh, what you have here are the, the, the payloads and cells. So if we now go into the payloads, let's pick one that we can just quickly um, check, uh, use as a as a as a test. So if we go to prank, that's pretty good. So one important one is if you work in um, in security, you need to be able to tell people who work for you not uh, to lock. Remember to lock their computers. And this one called Notepad Fun does exactly that. So if we open the payload, the payload itself, as we just quickly talk through it, um, it literally will one well, Windows R. So it'll work as a, a the, the HID, which is a human interface device. It will run uh, Windows R. Q is short for, for crack scripts. So it's going to run Windows R. It will wait 150 milliseconds. It will then open, uh, type in the word notepad, press enter, which obviously will bring up notepad. It will blink uh, the LED blue fi uh, 500 milliseconds. Uh, and then after 200 milliseconds, it will then uh, write the message header, which you'll see further down here. Uh, and then what you get is the then what you get is it's basically going to write the message header which is beginning and then it's going to a loop uh, this this message body and the message body is I will learn to lock my computer and it's going to repeat it ten times obviously you can change it to whatever you like and then basically uh, uh, lock your computer so very simple and then when it's finished it will uh, uh, put the LED on a solid green to say it's finished. Pretty simple. I didn't write this, but as you can see, you get an idea. Very easy to do. You do loads of things. So that's what that does. So let's put that in the payload to execute. So we'll copy that and uh, we need to decide where we're going to put it. But if we now go up to um, the payloads, if we look in switch one, I think I've already got it in here. Just check. Yeah. So switch one already has it in there. So in switch one on the bash bunny, we have that payload. So what we're going to do now is we're going to eject the bash bunny, which we're going to do now. Okay, we've got a file open, so let's just save to remove. So I've now ejected the bash bunny. We're now going to switch it to um, payload number one. Um, so it's actually one, it's just all the way back. One, two, and that means arm. So switch it to one. Okay, so again, just make that a bit closer for you. So that means arm, that is switch two is in the middle and one is at the back. So we switch it to switch one. And now I'm gonna plug this in. So we just change the screen. So let's plug this back in. Okay. So now the Bash Bunny is plugged in, and I'm just waiting for it to uh, boot. Uh, I'm watching at the moment, and we're now, we've now got a flashing boot. So as you can see, there is, am I, there is our prank. So there you go. So uh, that, that's how you basically update and execute a Bash Bunny script. So let's just double check. So if we close down Notepad, and what we do, I don't think we need this. Uh, if we now go to um, our Windows Explorer, you can see that it, because it was set as a HID, it didn't show up as a um, storage. So HID is human interface device. Okay. So let's, let's now show you how to connect to the Bash Bunny 
so I can safely unconnect it, uh, disconnect it. So this is what I'm going to do. So let's show you how to connect to the Bash Bunny, which we we pull out. I'll just okay. So we've pulled out the Bash Bunny, and what I'm going to do now is um, show you how to um, connect to this via serial port. There's been a couple of people who've had a few challenges over serial ports. Now um, I'm going to show you Windows 10. It's pretty easy over. Whoops, says me. It's pretty easy over other um, systems as well. But uh, let's now show you how to do this on Windows 10. So first thing, let's switch this to Army mode. Okay. So that, and that will give us storage, and it will also enable this to connect via the serial port. Okay. So let's go and do this. So I'm now going to plug this in. All right, so we plug it in into army mode. Okay, so that's now done. So what we get now is if we now look at our Windows 10 desktop, um, let's click on that and, oops, that's better. And now what we do is you can see we've got a bash bunny. Okay, so yeah, same as before, we can now add things to the bash bunny if we so wish. Okay, but what we want to do, if we don't need that, is we want to connect via a serial port. So we need to use a program called Putty. So I'm going to type in Putty, which I've pre-installed. If you need to install it, go to putty.org. So P-U-T-T-Y, and we run the program called Putty. Okay, so first thing we need to do before we can run Putty is we need to... Um, be able to select the correct communication port that the bash bunny is on. So first of all, we set this to serial. Okay, and now we need to right click on your Windows start bar, uh, start um, option, and then select device manager. Uh, and this will give you, when it pops up, it will warn me that I'm not an administrator because I'm running a test account. You won't get that usually, um, but for me, let's uh, let's move this here. Let's move this over. I'm using a touchpad if you're wondering why it's a bit jerky. Okay, so what we need to do is ascertain what port this is connected on. So if we click ports over here on the left, and then we will look for the port it's connected on. As you can see, we have a USB device which is connected on COM3. So over here, what we need to do is change this to COM3. Um, and then the speed is incorrect. So what we're going to do is change this to 115200. And we're going to open that. So now what you get is you get, let's make this a little bit bigger. Uh, if I can remember how to actually make it bigger is a good question. Do you know, I've never actually done this on this, so it's interesting. We can make the keys bigger. Interesting. Do you know, I can't see how you make the keys bigger, but we, we are zooming in on, on a video afterwards. Cool. Okay, anyway, so now what we need to do is we need to log in. So that's root. And now we need to use the password, which is hack five bunny, five bunny. And now we're logged in. Now, when I say hack five bunny, is literally it's got no C in it. So H A K five bunny. That's the default one for all of these, just like that. Okay. So now we're going to do just to prove that we're logged in. So ls, as you can see, we're, we're logged in, and you can go back to the root. Uh, okay, so you can see we've got uh, it's a full Linux desktop. So that's how you connect via um, serial port. Okay, cool. So that's what I've got. My next my next show I'm going to um, broadcast will be about how to use WP how to crack WPA Wi-Fi access. Uh, so I shall do that in a little while but um, if you've got any questions please put them in the comments and otherwise thank you very much for your time and please subscribe